Hi folks. Today we're going to be at Three Rivers Marine in Woodenville, Washington. Josh Hughes is going to give a seminar on Spring Chinook fishing the Columbia River. Now Josh is a Scotty Downrigger factory rep as well as a member of Team Three Rivers Marine. Josh has almost two decades of experience fishing the Columbia River. Josh is going to talk about anchor fishing for Spring Chinook. He's also going to talk about trolling for Spring Chinook. In both parts of this seminar, the information that he provides is going to be invaluable to help you be successful for fishing springers on the Columbia River. So make sure you watch all parts of this seminar. We got a pretty full house here, so if it gets a little hot or noisy or something, raise your hand, we can crack open this uh, door here and get a little air going on here. We're gonna have a raffle at the end. We're gonna give away some cool prizes. So, uh, and we'll have a break after about 45 minutes or so. Give everybody a shot to get another hot dog for breakfast or lunch. And uh, just give a big hand here. We got Josh Hughes. He's from uh, Team Three Rivers Marine. He's got over a couple decades of fishing down on the Columbia. So, I mean, man, he knows his stuff. So after the break, we'll have that and a big Q&A at the end. So anything you got, feel free to raise your hand. Get things going. And uh, thanks for Josh. Thanks, Kent. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass out some clipboards. It's, you know, I, I call on a lot of these dealers in the area. I'm a rep as well. I'm the rep for Scotty. And this is the only shop that I know of that does these kind of seminars. So it's really important to them for, for them to understand how you guys heard about this, whether it was on the website or email blasts or driving by the store. So I'm going to pass out some clipboards. If you guys could put your information down and they will keep you posted as to upcoming ones. They do fall schnook fishing. They do Puget Sound blackmouth. They do halibut, shrimp, crab, the whole nine yards. So pretty neat, uh, pretty neat that Three Rivers does this. So as Kent said, my name's Josh Hughes and uh, I'm the rep for Scotty and Hotspot and several other different uh, hunting and fishing lines. I cover all of Washington and Alaska. Um, I also have a background. I've got an, uh, a Coast Guard master's license. I've got an Oregon charter boat license and a Washington salmon and non-salmon license. So I, I've got some history guiding up in Alaska and in Washington and Oregon. So today we're gonna go over spring Chinook fishing on the Columbia River and, and we're kinda hitting this just spot on timing wise because we're already getting some reports of the last few days that it's starting to ramp up. And uh, we're expecting one of the largest runs in the last 100 plus years. I think third largest in 100 years. Um, upwards of 400,000 spring Chinook, which is great. And I'm here to tell you, if we get half that number, fishing will be good. We fished on less than half of that. We fished on a third of that last year, and it was pretty darn good. So um, we're talking spring Chinook. We're going to talk on the Columbia River. And where this, this seminar is primarily focused from, let's say, the Portland area downstream. Some of this will you know, carry over into some of its tributaries and the Willamette River, but we're going to focus on the areas that are open, and that is basically from the Portland area downstream to buoy 10. Um, I'm going to break it up into two different sessions. The first session, about 45 minutes, we're going to go over anchor fishing. The second session, we're going to go over herring fishing. Two different concepts, two different techniques. Um, everybody's got their own personal preference. Um, but I want to cover it all. And, and a lot of times it's tide dictated. So we might anchor fish in the morning on an outgoing tide, and we might switch gears and troll in the afternoon when the tide's coming in. And obviously the Columbia River is a river, but it's still tide influenced all the way up to the Vancouver Washougal area. So even though it's in a river and you think you got steady flow, it's still current influ influence. So we have to fish around those different, different tides. Um, gentleman pointed out earlier, here's a picture of, uh, from last year on the Willamette River. Everybody likes to start with a few pictures to get excited off the get-go. So on the Columbia, we can only keep hatchery fish, fin-clipped fish. So obviously, we get a few wild fish each year and each day. So there's a, a release. Here's a good day. This is in the Portland area, a limit of springers. On the main stem Columbia, you're allowed one spring Chinook a day, OK? And it must be fin-clipped. Another limit of springers. See that one, those two left ones are a good sized fish. Okay, anchor fishing. Um, 
again, this, is, this can be real enjoyable if you're in the right spot. It can be a long day if you're not in the right spot, a real long day. So um, it's all about traveling lanes on these spring fish. Some days it could be in 24 feet of water, some days it can be in 15 feet of water. I would suggest if you're not getting bit within an hour or so, I would do some moving, whether it's in, out, um, try and find a little break, try and find a hump. Um, don't sit there all day without a bite. Don't, don't be afraid to pick up and move. Um, but when we're talker, talking anchor fishery, um, safety is, is extremely important because we're talking big heavy anchors and we're talking pretty good flow, pretty good current in the Columbia River. The easiest way that we could explain this is we've got this hung up right up here, okay? We've got our Columbia River anchor. We call it a rocker anchor or a Columbia River anchor. You can see that there's about eight feet of chain attached to that. What that chain does is it helps lay that anchor down so those teeth are grabbing. A lot of, the, a lot of the, the bottom contour that we're fishing in the Columbia is sandy or small gravel. So that style anchor works the best. It really digs into that and holds you. So we've got six to eight feet of chain, we've got a rope, and we've got a buoy here with a one-way pulley, okay? And, and I'll kind of go over the whole thing, why we use it like that. It's kind of tough to see, but that chain goes all the way to the bottom of the anchor, okay? all the way to the bottom. So it lays that thing down nicely on the, on the, on the gravel and it allows you to dig in. Underneath, right where it's attached this first area, there's some zip ties that hold that chain in place. What that does, it allows the anchor to grab, but if it gets stuck on the bottom, when we pull our anchor, those zip ties break, okay? So now, instead of pulling to where it's digging in more, it pulls from the opposite direction, which allows it to get out of the rocks, okay? So chain, rope, buoy. This buoy's got a one-way ratchet system on it. So it allows me to pull it in, but it does not allow rope to go out unless you hold down those tabs. So when we hook a fish and we're on anchor, we, our buoy's already in the water, we untie our rope, we float out, we can float five miles down river and land a fish, run back up and our buoy's still floating there. But when we get ready to pull our buoy in, or pull our anchor in, instead of hand pulling 100 feet or 200 feet or 300 feet of rope and chain and anchor, we can motor up river, the buoy goes behind us, and it autom the, we use the force of the motor to pull our buoy up for, to pull our anchor up for us. So it'll go through that one-way ratchet system and lock into place, spin the boat around, just retrieve it, and it's all floating right underneath the buoy. Okay, that's why we do that. Um, the amount of anchor rope out when you're anchor fishing is, is very important. We call it scope. So let's say if we're in 10 feet of water, the proper scope in the Columbia River, in my opinion, is four to five feet, okay? So if I'm in 10 feet of water, I've got a minimum of 40 to 50 feet of rope out. If I have too little rope, first of all, my anchor is not gonna grab the way it should because it's too vertical, okay? It's not allowing it to lay down and dig into place. So, and it also, it's kind of dangerous because it makes you start skirting all over the place, okay? The more rope you have out, the more scope you have out, the smoother your boat sits, it won't drift side to side near as much, okay? It's also a lot safer. It allows that anchor to dig into place, you're secure, you're not gonna drift out. So that's what we call scope. So four to five feet of rope per foot of water. Springer fishing, we're typically in, like I said, 12 to 28 feet would be on the deep side. So you don't need 300 feet of rope. When you're fall Chinook fishing in August and September, a lot of times we're in 50 to 60 feet of water, so you need more rope. I would suggest when you buy an anchor system, go ahead and get 250 feet of rope. You have it, okay? All your excess rope, you bundle it up, put a couple zip ties around it, get a laundry bag, something to cinch that all up in, and it stays out of the way, okay? This is kind of an open forum. If you guys got questions along the way, raise your hand, because chances are somebody else has got the same question, okay? Sir. What I do at the end here, let's say that this is the end of our rope and I still have 100 feet of slack. I either curl it all up around my arm and zip tie it in a pile so it's not dangling 200 feet out behind the boat, or I, like a laundry bag works great. They make anchor bags that you can put it all in, cinch it tight, so release, float out. So that little ball of line is attached right behind your float. You motor up with your, with your docking pole, pick it up, tie it right back on, you're good to go, okay? What, what also goes hand in hand with anchor fishing is drift socks. I've always got a couple drift socks off the back of my boat. So what those are, it's like a sea anchor, big funnel, okay? So I've got about eight feet of rope attached behind them, and I've got a drift sock off each side. 
okay? That keeps the boat perfectly straight when I'm anchored. It's not drifting side to side. I don't want that gear swinging this way and swinging that way. I want it nice and straight, okay? And I can play with that too. I can put one off this side and it kind of pulls me over here or vice versa. I also have chocks installed on the bow of my boat so I can move over. Every time I move this chalk, the rope over one time, that moves me about 10 feet. So I got 10 and 20 feet. I got 20 feet of variance. If I'm not catching fish in 20 feet of water, I can move over or move in. Sometimes 10 feet can make two feet of difference. Okay, so it'll slide me up on the hill a little bit. So I play around with it. If I'm catching fish, I'm staying where I'm at. If I'm not, I'm going side to side or I'm going moving in shallower or moving out deeper or down or up. Um, so that's kind of the safety feature, safety aspects of anchor fishing. We'll get into the fun stuff now. We talked about uh, correct anchor size. Uh, that's a big thing. Um, I, I would say this is a 30 pound anchor or 25 pound anchor and that will cover most boats, okay? Anywhere from small 14, 15 foot boats all the way up to a 25 foot boat. That will cover you in the Columbia River for spring Chinook and it'll cover you for fall Chinook as well. So a 25 to 30 pound Columbia River or rocker style anchor is what you need. Breakaway safety retrieval for anchor, we've talked about that. Now to get to the nuts and bolts, uh, fishing while we say on the pick or on the anchor, um, nine times out of 10 or yeah, I'd say even more than that, 99% of the time we're fishing plugs. We're fishing these banana shaped plugs, either quick fish or flat fish. There's Brad's is now making a, a version of them, but we're fishing, we're fishing with plugs, okay? Um, I'm a quick fish fan. They're made by Lure Jensen. They've been around forever. I, I like to use quick fish. On a rare occasion, I'll use some flat fish as well. Similar, similar concept. And plugs dive on their own, okay? So they, they have a nose on them. They're, they float, but once they have resistance against that bill, it dives down, okay? So there's a million different colors of plugs, and we'll kind of go over how, how we select that as well. You can see, sky's the limit. There's, there's a bunch of different colors. And I was talking to a gentleman here earlier, and we both agreed that we have about 20 boxes full of, of these plugs that are full to the brim. And you'll find that out of that 20 boxes, you might find 10 or 12 that you want to make sure are in the water or wrapped and ready to go at all times. Because you find your favorites, you find the ones that fish good. Not all plugs fish phenomenal out of the package. Some fish better. I don't know what it is. A little bit of movement, a little bit of color. Certain plugs fish better than others. Okay. Um, let, I'm going to kind of... Let's start rods and reels and how we, how we set up our rods and so forth for, for fishing quick fish. Um, I keep all the same rods in the boat. I want, if, if you grab one, I want it to be identical to the next guy that grabs one. So I, I, I have all the exact same rods and reels in the boat and, and these are the same rods that I'm using for trolling herring. I'm using these for spring chinook, fall chinook, everything. That's, this is the rod. And I like longer rods. The longer, the better to me, okay? I like the fightability in them. It's so much more fun to catch a fish on a longer rod than it is a short broomstick. So I use 10 and a half foot rods. The whole boat's got 10 and a half foot rods in it. Um, these, are, um, these are G. Loomis, they're rated 10 to 40, so it's a good mix, okay? Again, I could fish Springers and I could fish Fall Chinook. Um, I like line counter reels. I know exactly where everybody's at at the same time, okay? I, I know if you've got 50 feet of line out and you've got 40 feet that we need to get those pretty uniform. Also, when we hook a fish, I know, hey, I need to grab the net. He's got 10 feet of line out. Um, so I, I, I use Shimano Dakota line counter reels. I make them in several sizes. These are the 300s. The 300 and 500 are the most popular size. And I use braided line. I use braided line for pretty much every salmon application there is. I like the concept that it's small diameter. There's no stretch. Okay, it lasts a long time, far longer than monofilament. Um, and it's extremely sensitive. Okay, I know if I got a line bump. I know if I picked up some grass on my quick fish, it's that sensitive, okay? So that's the end of part one. Make sure you go to part two for more information on fishing springers on the Columbia River. Three Rivers Marine is Western Washington's destination for anglers. Three Rivers Marine is run by fishermen for fishermen. Visit their website at threeriversmarine.com. Thank <laughs> you.